cancer is a continuously growing global health problem that poses major challenges, most especially in developing countries. Find out how this international distributor of innovative health products came up with a series of solutions to help increase a patient's chance to survive the odds. In 2020, the Philippines hit a record of 354,398 prevalent cancer cases within a five-year period. But because of poor access to health care, especially for people living below the poverty line, the advances and breakthroughs in cancer remain unattainable to many. Cancer refers to a group of diseases that's characterized actually by cell growth, abnormal cell growth and proliferation, inflammation, as well as angiogenesis or formation of new blood vessels. It always starts with mutation in the genome or the genetic makeup of a person inside the cell. Before PPARS, most of my patients, they were unable to finish the chemotherapy regimens because of the side effects and because of discomfort during the process of chemotherapy. Maria's son, Dominic, was diagnosed with stage 4 rhabdomyosarcoma when he was only 4 years old. While coping with the recovery of her other sick child, Maria found it hard to accept Dominic's condition. It was actually very devastating because with Dominic, it was manifested mga 4 years old. Na siya, unlike my daughter, ko na congenital talaga, baby pa lang. Yung mga bandang September, meron nang umbok-umbok dito sa leeg niya. Hindi ko talaga inisip na cancer ka agad siya until nag bleed siya. Hi! Dominic was prescribed chemotherapy but his family insisted to rush to an integrative doctor to seek for alternative cure. Medyo hesitant ako kasi as a mother, I know the side effects ng chemotherapy kasi. So what I did is that I rushed towards the integrative doctor of my daughter who happened to be the partner doctor of St. Nature. One of the hardest decisions to make for people living with cancer is choosing the kind of treatment that would work best. To help patients and their families deal with this growing health problem, one company commits to producing safe, credible and natural health solutions by drawing on the latest bioscience technology to deliver a series of safe, efficient, and natural products. What is Simply Nature and what does it do? Simply Nature is a company we created and founded about 10 years ago. Our mission is to find effective health solutions for people. So we provide natural products that work in combination with conventional therapy and medicine. As an international company that provides natural solutions for cancer, metabolic syndrome, and degenerative diseases, the management upholds a health philosophy that centers on whole food nutrition as the frontier in health management. When we talk about choosing treatment, especially in the area of cancer, patients are really afraid of chemotherapy because of its side effects, and they tend to then look towards natural products. But this is not a either conventional or natural choice. At Simply Nature, patients can have the best of both worlds. Our protocols work with conventional chemotherapy to minimize its side effects so that they can get the best treatment using both conventional and natural together. Cancer is like a virus. It continuously evolves, it mutates. So it can develop defenses against our usual treatment modalities like chemotherapy. Like I said, chemotherapy and radiation therapy have, have a lot of side effects. So more often than not, patients stop their treatment because of these side effects. It's very important to have the support. With the supplements that we give the patients, there will be lesser side effects, so they will be able to finish their chemotherapy protocols more comfortably. This company introduced PPARS, which is touted as one of the best natural ways of solving serious health problems. PPARS stands for Peroxisome Proliferator Activating Receptors. It's basically a nuclear receptor found inside the cells. Now, when these receptors are activated, the benefit that you can get from that is, number one, cellular differentiation. Number two, it's to 
promote fatty acid metabolism. You, if you have better insulin function, your blood sugar will naturally go down. And another one is to induce cancer cell death by modulating the immune system. As a sole distributor of PPARS, the company promotes its use to many reputable health institutions worldwide and actively organizes corporate health conferences and public health talks in Asia. Simply Nature PPARS is made out of a special stream of these types of microalgae. It is very effective by protecting the bone marrow. We maintain the integrity of the immune system of the patient, which is very important to prevent infections and to fight off the cancer itself. And also, Simply Nature PPARS is also very dense in nutrients so that the patient can recover faster because of better cellular healing. Sabi ko parang na lead kami to an extraordinary and I must say amazing journey. I'm very proud of him. At a young age, na eight years old, he believed that it's his purpose to siguro encourage other people. Then we would like to really pay it forward with the knowledge that there's really like Simply Nature that can help people with cancer very much. When fighting cancer, living healthy is very important because it allows us to pursue what is important to us in life. And that's what it's all about. When we can help a patient move from being bedridden to getting up, to be lucid in thought so that they can have conversations with their loved ones, it gives the whole process of fighting cancer a whole new meaning. And that is what drives us at Simply Nature. Hello po, ako nga po pala si Ronaline Rosales Batalier, 23 years old at ako po ay taga Bicol, Albay. Uh, Nadiagnose po ako nung taong 2015, which is ito po yung mixed germ cell tumor sa ovary. I stage 1 po ako nung diagnose ako. Tinanggal po agad yung right ovary ko nun. May nakakita sa akin na ano, taga dun sa amin, sabi niya. What if try ko daw sumali ng contest? Tapos hindi ko nga sinabi na may sakit ako eh. Sabi ko, sige baka sakaling kahit pa paano may pandagdag kami sa gasos namin. Then noong 2017 po, yun na po, pabalik-balik yung lagnat ko. Siguro mga two weeks hindi ako nawawalan ng lagnat. Tapos yun na, pagpa-check up ko kasi lumaki po yung chan ko. Doon ko po nalaman na yung cancer ko daw, new mirrors to count na siya. Yung sakit sobra pa, yung nararamdaman ko, likod and sa stomach ko. Kino po lumaki po yung chan ko, hirap na hirap pa ako. Nagawa po yung nakalata na din yung lungs ko. Yung sa liver ko, kaya daw po lumaki yung chan ko, tagawa ng sa liver po. Hindi na masyado nagpapunction yung mga organ ko sa loob ng chan. Yun po, nirepair na po kami sa child house. And then, yun, nung start na nag-chemo ako, doon na po kami tumira. Na, Nag-stay na po sa child house. Akala ko okay na, hindi na, wala na mangyayaring operasyon ulit. Pero nagulat po ako kasi every month pay check-up na lang po ako. Muwi lang po ako sa amin tapos nagsusuka na naman ako. Akala ko kung ano na naman po yun. Yung dumi na ilalabas ko sa bibig na. Sabi ko ano na naman to pa. Kaya na naman tayong sisimula na naman tayo. May nakita daw po ulit na bukol sa diaprag. Iyak na iyak na naman po ako. Sabi ko hindi pa nga magaling yung sa ibang organ ko. Tapos ito na naman. Hindi pa po asab na wala na po akong treatment and may tumor pa po ako sa diaphragm and late, lately may nakita na naman daw po sa akin ng gal ng gallstone sa may ano ko gallbladder. Pero napansin ko po talaga start po uminom ako nung the nature which is which is yung powder and tablet po na pipars para pong pag nakainom ko po siya before ako mag matulog. Pag nakainom po ako parang na nare-relieve, parang nare-relax po yung katawan ko. Kasi siguro mga two days after na take ko po yung gamot, parang napansin ko na parang everyday na ako nagbabawas. Kasi po talaga dati siguro sa isang linggo tatlong beses na po ako nagbabawas. And nakita ko po talaga yung good feedback agad ng gamot na ininom ko. Kasi yun nga po, parang pag nainom ko po siya, parang yung sa loob ko na may something ako naririnig na tumutunog. And after yun po, nagbabawas na po ako. And parang ang gaan po sa pakiramdam. And parang medyo po nabawasan yung bloated ko sa chan. Start po nung uminom po ako. About po dito sa Pepar's powder po, tinitake ko po siya every after meal. And based sa protocol po na ibigay po sa akin ni Doc Jensen, pag morning, which is five scoop, nilalagay po sa ilalim ng dilay. Naantayin mo po yun matunaw. Pag gabi naman po, Tinitake ko siya after dinner, which is for, for scoop naman po siya. Kasi sa protocol po is kailangan everyday makatake ako ng 9 scoop. So, kapag po, based po sa observation ko, kapag po naiinom ko po itong powder, 
parang yung something na tumutunog po talaga sa chan ko na parang may something parang kini-cleanse na yung sa loob ng chan ko and after po noon magbabawas na so parang after ko pong magbawas noon parang feeling ko sobrang gaan ng pakaramdam ko sa chan ko tungkol naman po sa Pipars Plus tablets naman po based sa protocol po na ibinigay po sa akin ni Jock Johnson uh, ano po siya kailangan everyday makatake po ako ng 30 tablets so sa protocol po na sinusunod ko Iinumin ko po siya with empty, empty yung stomach ko. Pag morning, pagkagising ko, ito po talaga agad yung iniinom ko. 15 tablets sa morning and after naman po, same, kailangan empty din yung stomach mo. 15 sa morning ng pagkagising ko and 15 sa evening after dinner ko before ako mag-sleep. Kasi yun nga po, mas pinipili ko siya after dinner na lang po siya inumin para po agad. Pag nainom ko po siya, yun nga po, naririlib yung katawan ko parang... Mabilis po ako nakakatulog at naiiwasan ko po yung insomnia na lagi ko pong na, nararanasan nung, noon po, na, lalo lalo na po nung after po ako mag So, yun. Daily routine ko, yun, gumigising ako ng umaga for exercise kasi yun din yung advice sa akin ng doktor ko. Kailangan may regular exercise ako and pagkain ng mga masustansya pagkain. And yun nga po, nabanggit ko last time na mahilig talaga ako magluto. Yun po talaga, kapag nakumakait po kami sa office, talagang ako po yung nag, nag luluto po para sa pagkain po namin ng ibang mga kasamahan po pasyente. As of now, thankful po ako kasi isa po ako sa nakatanggap ng scholarship sa isang magandang universidad dito sa Manila. Uh, isa po sa nag-udyok sa akin para kumuha ako ng kursong education is yung mga bata po na kasamahan ko dito. So, na nakita ko po yung hirap ng papa ko. So, sinasabi ko sa sarili ko na hindi ako kailangan panginahan ng loob kasi yung papa ko nilalaban niya ako eh. Pero ako that time po kasi naiisip, kapag naiisip ko yung tanim ko, parang ano, ang sakit po. Like, nakikita ko yung papa ko na lumalaban. Pero yung katawan ko, pakiramdam ko po kasi sumusuko na kahit yung utak ko, yung puso ko, gusto ko lumaban. Hindi matutumbasan ng pasasalamat yung nagawa sa akin ng papa ko kasi talaga sobrang bait ng papa ko. And nung November po, is nag-city scan po ako. Doon ko po nalaman na may nakita daw po sa na bagong tumor po sa akin. So that time, syempre, naisip ko na okay na ako tapos may nakikita na, nakita na naman po ulit na bago. So I am so thankful po kasi nung December po, is nakilala ko po kayo. Nakilala ko po sila, Mr. Sean, sila Doc Jansen po at ang Simply Nature staff po na alam ko pong nakatulong po talaga sa akin. And yun nga po, nung nakita po na parang bad yung result ng CT scan ko, and after po nung December, bali po after December po, and until June, July, bali nakatatlong CT scan po ako. At nakita ko po talaga yung improvement po ng result ng CT scan and ultrasound ko po. And I'm so happy po na nitong latest na CT scan ko nung July, Uh, tuwang-tuwa po si, si Doc Jansen kasi talagang nakita po niya na lumiit po talaga yung tumor ko. And masayang-masaya masayang masaya po ako doon. Siguro kung wala yung simple nature, siguro uh, yung tumor na nakita po sa akin, I think siguro po mas lalala po siya. Kasi yun nga po ang sabi nila, kapag na-stress yung pasyente, mas lalo po yung nagtitrigger yung cancer po. Kaya yun nga po. Maraming maraming salamat po talaga sa Simple Nature kasi kung hindi po dahil sa inyo, siguro hanggang ngayon, stop pa rin po ako sa pag-aaral. Ngayon po, gusto ko lamang po pala ipaabot ang aking pasasalamat kila Doc Johnson and Mr. Sean. Maraming maraming salamat po talaga kasi alam ko po talaga nakatulong po siya sa akin at alam ko pong mas lumakas po ako. And sabi nga po ni, ni Doc Johnson na kahit slowly siya, sure naman po talaga nagagaling po ako. Kaya maraming maraming salamat po sa walang sawang pag-support po sa akin.
Hello and good evening, everyone. I'm Sheila, your host for tonight. You are watching another episode of Simply Nature Webinar, your long time running healthcare awareness webinar here in social media. This program is powered by Simply Nature International and Simply Healed Medical Group. Last week's webinar discussed about the lung cancer, its treatment, prevention, and strategies. Tonight's topic is entitled The Link Between Cancer and Diabetes. Does sugar feed cancer? We appreciate each and every one of you for watching and registering to this webinar and for sharing this online event with your friends and loved ones. Now join us as for a brief but impactful webinar as we unravel the intriguing links between diabetes and cancer in just a short time. We'll explore share, and share factors emerging research and the implications of healthcare. Now, at this point, I'd like to call on to start off our webinar for tonight as our PPARS expert from Singapore, Mr. Sean Lim. Hi, Sir Sean. Good evening. Hi. I can't start my video because it's being blocked by the host. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but right. yeah, could they fix it? Can someone fix that? Hi, Miss Ella. Can we fix the? Can we open the camera up, Mister Sean? There, ah, you there go. we go. All right. Hi, Sir Sean. Good evening. Hi, everyone. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, greetings tonight. Actually, I'm uh today has been a hectic day because tomorrow I'm flying to Singapore. Yay. Okay. Uh, tonight's topic is one that is that we visited. I think more than a year ago, maybe two years ago, is, uh, is there a link between cancer and diabetes, all right? I think this is a question very important uh, that everybody wants to know because uh, we all love our sugar today. Uh, and many people are pre-diabetic or even diabetic. So I think uh, listen to what the discussion with Dr. Johnson is going to give you a good insight uh, and give you good reasons to manage your blood sugar level. I also noticed that there were already questions about uh like should miss gloria was asking uh when is the best time to take people our tablets all right so all these questions keep them coming we will answer them <laughs> after the short discussion with uh dr jensen in the ask me anything segment of tonight so looking forward to all your questions uh welcome to the program i'll hand the time back to sheila as she introduces dr jensen Thank you, Sir Sean. All right. Now, at this point, just before we start off our tonight's topic and our webinar tonight, um, with the help of his patient case presentation, let's welcome Dr. Jansen Kalalan, a graduate from St. Luke's Medical Center, College of Medicine in 2016. And in 2019, he was conferred as a diplomat of the International Board of Lifestyle Medicine and Philippine College of Lifestyle Medicine. He is also the president of Simply Healed Medical Group and consultant at Alta Integrative Medicine and Wellness Complex at Perpetual Health Medical Center, Las Piñas, where he manages patients with cancer and metabolic illnesses. Let's watch Ms. Dr. Jensen Kalanan. What's amazing with PPAR uh, gamma activation is that it um, promotes apoptosis. Literally food, uh, it was made by God, not synthetic what, whatsoever. So there's a lot of a myriad, thousands of uh, nutrients and uh, polyphenols inside uh, the microalgae that works in synergy. Okay, so when you take it, then that's when it becomes uh, really effective, especially when you tie it up to a healthy lifestyle. Welcome everybody to another episode of Simply Heal. And today we have Dr. Johnson with us again. Doc, welcome back to the program. Hi, glad to be here again with you guys. Okay, today's program actually came from you, our viewers. Um, two, two programs ago, someone asked this question. Does sugar fuel cancer? That means, does eating sugar make cancer worse? So um, today, Dr. Johnson will answer that question. And I just want to remind everybody, we have a Q&A after every program. So 
uh, and you type your questions in, we will really read it and, and we will even develop an entire episode just based on your queries as what we are doing today. So Dr. Johnson, does sugar affect cancer? Okay, the simplest answer is yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes and okay, no. yes and no. Yes, um, sugar feeds, uh, feeds cancer cells for mm. their growth, but our healthy cells, our normal cells also need sugar for it to function, okay? So, um, where did this concept of uh, sugar feeds on uh, uh, sugar feeds cancer cells uh, came from? So, it's because of the Warburg effect, no? So, basically, what the Warburg effect is, is that um, cancer, since cancer cells are um, multiplying, growing uninhibited, fast. yeah, they're really growing fast, so they are highly metabolic. And the primary fuel of metabolism is... Glucose, glucose or sugar. Right. So um, these cancer cells will tend to uh, metabolize glucose much faster or at a higher degree than the normal cells. Okay, but is it really the sugar? Mm. So is it really the sugar? <laughs> this is an important question because here in the Philippines uh, and I think throughout Southeast Asia, people can't live without their sugar. Yeah. Right? Uh, so everything is sweet. Uh, yeah. Filipinos are very sweet uh, and they, because they eat a lot of sweet stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> well, we really want to know, is, is okay. it really, how does it work? Doc? Okay, so um, first let us establish if really, if you go on a very low sugar diet, does your cancer improve? Does your condition improve? So, the diet in existence today that has a very low carbohydrate Intake is the ketogenic diet. Oh, there's a very famous giant diet, the keto diet. Even ice cream. There's a brand of ice cream called keto ice, ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, that, yeah. In fact, that's a big fad. Mm. Uh, and, and Doc, since you brought it up, uh, I'm very curious to your answer because um, is keto diet healthy, right? So mm. I think we'll be able to answer many questions with this very good question from our. Okay. Viewers. Okay. So here it goes. Here it goes. Okay. This study uh -huh. actually. Um, I uh, uh, got uh, uh, a sample of breast cancer. Breast so, cancer. Yeah. Right. So what they did is to drip, instead of glucose, they drip ketones on it. And what they found out is that the tumor growth increased by 2.5 times. Wow. We're going to flash up this study. Take a look at it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at it. It's, it's written very clearly. All yeah. Right. Okay. So now, yes, the tumor increased. The, uh, the the ketones increased the tumor growth by 2.5 times. Now, 2.5 by 2.5 times. 250 yeah. percent faster growth. <laughs> yeah. is, is ketones. Wow. Yeah, and um, it shows that um, these cancer cells uh, have a higher affinity for ketones. Is because breast cancer cells tend to metastasize to the liver mm. uh, more commonly. Okay, so and as we all know. Liver is a major site of ketogenesis because liver is a major organ of metabolism, mm. right? Okay, so that explains uh, why. And if you take a look at the genetic makeup, um, those cancer cells who uh, who are exposed who are exposed to ketones are actually more aggressive. But here's the thing: does it translate to cl uh, clinically? And unfortunately, yes, because um, Breast cancer patients who are on a ketogenic diet actually fare worse than their normal counterparts. So their overall uh, survival decreases significantly. Wow. Okay. And I think women are the primary targets of a ketogenic diet because they want to lose weight and be slim. Yeah. And you know, uh, to be fair, mm. um, what they want to do is valid because okay. um, for cancer, you always want to... Uh, shed off uh, the weight. weight because yeah. obesity is, um, is a, ma a major risk factor for uh, for cancer as well. Okay, okay. so if you um, um, have your if you decrease your weight, then your overall survival will significantly increase. Yeah, but uh, you have to do it right. So now let's investigate further. What is it in sugar that feeds cancer? Oh wow! This okay, is, this is exciting. <laughs> Okay, so here is a multidimensional model of cancer development. So okay. basically what this model tells us is that 
um, insulin resistance and inflammation are major driving uh, are major driving forces behind cancer. Okay, so chronic hyperinsulinemia promotes cancer growth. Or if you if your insulin levels are uh, are on a very high level for a very long period of time, so what it produces is that it stimulates uh, abnormal cellular signaling. And then it promotes growth factor dependent cell proliferation and directly affecting cellular metabolism. Another one is that insulin increases IGF-1 or insulin-like uh, growth factor 1. Mm. So um, how does it do it? It, ha it enhances the, the liver production of IGF-1 and thereby reducing the production of IGF binding proteins. So IGF binding proteins are actually um, proteins that holds the IGF-1 so that the IGF-1 does not produce its effect, mm. okay? Then, another um, factor is that insulin decreases the sex hormone binding globulin, which increases estrogen levels, there, therefore increasing uh, breast cancer risk. So again, uh, sex hormone binding globulin acts like a glove, which holds the sex hormones, which, are, uh, which is estrogen, so that estrogen does not... Um, produce its uh, effect uh, too much. So another one is obesity. So as we, as we all know, um, obesity is the most common cause of insulin resistance. And uh, it promotes low-grade inflammation, um, which um, brings in, uh, which sets us up or sets up the environment for um, malignant transformation or cancer progression. Okay, so another one is if your blood sugar is on a is, is high for a very long period of time for or chronic hyperglycemia and increased oxidative stress so these also contributes to increased cancer risk so if you are if you are diabetic so you have to be uh, careful as well okay doc you said a lot of scientific terms <laughs> okay uh, let, let, let me ask um, so that our viewers everyone can understand mm, mm. so basically you are saying that uh, does sugar affect cancer? And the answer is yes, yes. and no. also no. Yeah. Okay, so we, we, we take a look at whether sugar affects cancer by looking at the extreme opposite. What if we have very low sugar and what happens, right? Hmm. And that's the ketones. So those of us who go on ketogenic diet, we are trying to burn fat, we, we reduce sugar level, yeah. we don't eat carbo, right? So no carbo, no glucose, mm -hmm. low sugar level. And it shows that ketones actually increase the cancer tumor growth by 250%. Right. Wow. And how they did it is that they drip ketones they onto the cancer tumor. Yeah. Wow. That's exactly what happens to your body. Your, your body becomes, uh, that's why you have a test kit instead of testing blood sugar level, uh, you test your ketone levels. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are fanatics about ketogenic diet, they mm -hmm. actually buy ketone test kits, yeah, right? Yeah. So this really goes to show, out there, especially if you're a breast cancer patient, don't go for ketogenic diet, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that, that is not good. Definitive answer is not good for your cancer. It yeah. will make your cancer tumors grow faster, yeah. all right? Okay, next is, but having high blood sugar is actually not good. Yeah. Okay, and it does a few things, right? Um, insulin levels will be high because uh, you have a lot of sugar, so mm. you produce a lot of insulin. Mm. So it's going to affect uh, your... Okay, you said a lot of medical things, but basically <laughs> having high sugar level is not good. Not good as well. All right. Yes. And, and that, does that mean that you're, if you're diabetic, diabetes causes cancer? I mean, uh, or, or is a big factor in you developing cancer? Yeah, it's a big factor. It's definitely a risk factor. Though, um, having diabetes doesn't necessarily always equate to cancer. So, diabetes does not cause cancer. Okay. But, um, those of you who are diabetic have an increased risk of getting cancer. Ah, okay. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like me playing my PS4 does not make my wife angry. Yeah. But playing PS4 increases the risk of me irritating <laughs> my wife. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. It's the, uh, it's all right. So definitely the, thing, yeah. the answer for me at home is not to play PS4 <laughs> if I want to make my wife happy. Yeah. Right. So if you don't want, if you really want to be cancer free, right. Don't don't make make sure you don't have a high sugar mm. intake. All right. Yes. Okay. okay. So hi guys. 
Uh, before we continue, I would just like to remind everyone, if you have any questions, just comment them down below and we're going to answer them later in the live Q&A. So, the next question is, okay, now, Doc, we have to control our insulin, right? So, how do we do that? How okay. do we do that? How do we do that? So, um, remember, the main function of insulin is that once you eat, so once you eat, your blood sugar increases. Mm. The main function of insulin is to bring down your blood sugar. Mm. Okay? It's a negative feedback effect. It's in order for your body to control your blood sugar levels. Okay? So, mm. how insulin decreases the blood sugar levels is that insulin acts like a key. So, uh, the insulin attaches to a receptor in the surface of the cell membranes. Mm. Okay? So, once that, uh, once that, that, insulin att attaches to that uh, receptor, the receptor acts like a gate or a door. Mm. So it opens up so that your blood sugar can go inside the cell in order for your cells to utilize uh, sugar or glucose. Mm. Okay, so that is what, that is the basic function of insulin is. Mm. Now, here's the problem. Mm. Insulin also attaches to a, to, a, to a receptor in your cell membrane called the INSR receptor. So, wow. the INSR receptor is an enzyme. Okay? So, once insulin interacts with INSR, um, this produces a cellular cascade, no? uh, A cellular cascade that leads to increased cell proliferation, increased migration, increased um, differentiation, and inhibition of apoptosis or cellular death. So, in simpler terms, it produces increased cellular multiplication. And remember, cancer is unlimited cellular multiplication. Mm. Okay? An inhibited cellular multiplication. Wow, that's so that is uh, how it does it. So now, you have to be able to control your insulin spikes. In order to do that, you have to increase your fiber intake. Okay? Because why? Fiber, once you eat it, inside the intestine, it acts like a sponge so that your intestine does not absorb all the sugar in all in one go. Okay? So that is how you control your insulin spike. That's, that's a problem for Filipino diet because uh, we eat uh, rice and adobo with no fiber in it at all because the rice is white rice, not yeah. brown rice. Yeah. So that's why, and my friend, I, I remember my friend has, uh, mm. his record is at Manginan Sao, mm. unlimited rice, eight bowls of Whoa. rice. <laughs> <laughs> so that, he must have had a crazy insulin crazy. spike. Yeah. So yeah. if he was a cancer patient, that would be bad news. Yeah, that would be bad news because he would be fueling his uh, cancer uh, much to a higher extent. All right. So, so Doc, I mean, in the beginning, we, we, I think a lot of people were very happy because uh, you sort of hinted that sugar is not bad for mm. cancer, but actually uh, the normal diet is, uh, Filipino diet is not going to be cancer yeah. friendly. Yeah. Uh, high sugar levels creates the insulin problem. Does this mean also that if I'm a diabetic and I'm injecting insulin, that means if, if a diabetic with on insulin and has cancer is... Mm. It's a it's a terrible situation. Um, again, it's a yes and no answer. Okay. Um, it depends, no, on how high you are, how how high is the dose that you are injecting, and mm. how long have you are you in already injecting insulin? Now, if for type two diabetics who are injecting insulin, um, usually these patients inject a very a relatively higher dose of insulin. So. Um, Researchers also uh, found out that, yeah, diabetic patients who are on a regular insulin, injecting insulin, they're, a higher, they're at a higher risk of developing cancer. But here's the thing. Mm. Um, having cancer or developing cancer is really multi uh, very multiple, uh, multiple, reasons. multiple reasons, multifactorial. Mm. So is it really because of the insulin injection or is it because of your lifestyle? It's, it's everything, yeah. right? It's everything. It's mm. um, it's uh, one thing influences another. Then uh, they have uh, both influences uh, cancer uh, cancer growth. So um, it's not really a cause and effect, mm. but it's a matter of risk. You increase your risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's how it uh, uh, works. 
Okay? Okay. So, if you are injecting insulin, make sure you change your diet. Because if not, here is another problem that you might have to face sooner or later. Wow. So, wow, well, lots of... So, again, I think this answers our question. Mm. So, so, what does it mean for a cancer patient? What should they do? How should they manage their sugar intake? Since they cannot not eat sugar because... Yep. That would be bad. Yeah. Now, if they follow the normal mang ina sao, eight bowls of rice, that would also be bad. Yeah. Uh, so if they eat a regular amount, like a normal uh, Southeast Asian person, easily at every meal we eat one and a half to two cups <laughs> of rice, right? Yeah. So uh, I guess we should we should lessen that to one cup or half cup mm. and eat a lot of vegetables. Yeah. Okay. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you want to have a consultation with me, just comment down below and our team will get back to you to set an appointment with me. What else do they need to do to manage this sugar thing? If they want to eat one and a half cups of rice, <laughs> then what can they do so that they can eat one and a half cups yeah. of rice? Okay, so mm. uh, here's what you can do. Mm. Um, you can actually take mm. cleansing. So cleansing is a fiber drink. Okay. You can actually um, drink it before you eat. Okay, oh, so that make you full. yeah, it'll make you full. Number uh -huh. one, so you don't eat as much, okay. and then you get your uh, dose of fiber, so you get your sponge, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Okay, and then eat the the food that you that you like. But of course, doesn't if if you are taking cleansing, then you're going to eat your lechon, you're going to eat your mang inasal. Then doesn't work that way. Of uh, <laughs> you, you know, so um, still you should be eating a whole food plant based diet, and then. If you are not yet ready or you are on your journey into transitioning, mm. then um, drinking cleansing would be a very good help so that you immediately up your fiber intake. Okay. So fiber intake is so important yeah. because it regulates your body's uh, the way it absorbs. Yeah. So you avoid uh, you avoid all the spikes in your in, 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 in your in your sugar intake. Yeah. Actually, it's okay for you to eat sugar, right? Mm. Rice, enjoy your rice. But the problem is if you don't eat fiber, the rice goes into your system like a shock. Immediately. Yeah. Right. So that makes something good and permissible become bad. So as long as you eat more vegetables and if you don't if you can't find vegetables, take cleansing fiber, <laughs> then you are able to have a more normal yeah. diet and And uh, another benefit is that if you if your fiber intake is high, mm. it makes the bowel if it makes your bowel movement much faster. Yeah. So the toxins doesn't stay too much in inside your colon. So you immediately expel it after. That's also very important. Cancer patients have a buildup of toxicity yeah. in their body. You gotta keep it cleansed. I, I know so many cancer patients that have constipation problem. Yeah. And they feel so good when they go to the CR. Ah, success. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, Doc, we we talked about. Uh, so much about diabetes and, and so really uh, today I'm very surprised we were supposed to talk about uh, sugar and cancer but I, I realized today that so much of uh, cancer diabetes is related to cancer uh, and Filipinos I think I, the statistics tell us that like 20 30 percent 30 percent of Filipinos are diabetic yeah but honestly my feeling is like 70 percent of <laughs> Filipinos are diabetic mm -hmm. it's just that they don't know it yet yeah all right yeah. Or, or, so that makes that makes it the case that almost every Filipino that gets cancer uh, the cancer is more complicated because they are very likely to be pre-diabetic or slightly diabetic or mm. full-blown diabetes right mm -hmm. so uh, wow um, and I just want to say, you know, I am so excited because uh, Simply Nature PIPA series is originally designed, uh, I mean, it's perfect for diabetics. We actually help the blood uh, sugar, uh, the, the cells become insulin sensitive, so you don't have to produce so much insulin, right? Your yeah. insulin actually works. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, and, and because it's also uh, high fiber, full of chlorophyll, detox, and all that stuff, binds the food. Wow, it's, it's really a great a great way especially during COVID right now too uh, mm -hmm. so it's amazing and I remember in one of our research diagrams our PIPA actually has T was compared to TZDs and yeah. Doc you mentioned something about TZDs and cancer right yeah yeah what is that <laughs> <laughs> hi guys uh, before we continue, I would just like to remind everyone, if you have any questions, just comment them down below and we're going to answer them later in the live Q&A. 
TZDs are also known as thiazolidine diones. So these, uh, this is a classification of uh, drugs. So they are basically used for diabetes. So examples of this is pioglitazone. Okay, so um, TZD acts like a PPAR agonist. Mm. It specifically binds to PPAR gamma. Mm. Okay, so uh, what is amazing with this drug is that in, it inhibits INSR expression. What okay? does INSR do? So INSR, okay, if, if we go back uh, uh, a while, uh, to what I said a while ago, mm. no? So INSR, uh, the main function of it is to promote cellular growth or cellular multiplication. Mm. Okay, and so if we keep on stimulating that, then cells are going to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Ah. So if cells uh, grow and grow and grow, uh, uh, multiple times grow very fast, then the chances for mutations or genetic mutations will increase. Okay, so that's when cancer uh, uh, starts or when th that's where uh, when cancer uh, grows. So what okay. you're saying is that PIPA gamma activation, like using TZD, which is a drug mm. to do that, will actually reduce or uh, prevent your your cells, like your cancer cells from running around like crazy. Yeah, you, right. you basically calm them down so yeah. that they don't, uh, they're not super active. Yeah. And that, and that means for cancer patients, literally it means to slow down your tumor's uh, rate of growth yep. and yep. to also prevent uh, metastasis, the, the rampant growth. And, and, and I heard, Doc, you, you mentioned to me just now in our discussion, it also, uh, what's that called? Uh, encourages apoptosis because uh, INSR reduces apoptosis. So if you, if you lessen INSR, you actually cause apoptosis to happen more yeah. more frequently. Yeah. And for our listeners out there, you know, when I first heard the term apoptosis, I was like, what is that? Uh, doc, what is apoptosis? Okay, so apoptosis is a uh, programmed cell death. Okay, so uh, cellular death, it's just <clears throat> cells dying. So that's medical term, it's apoptosis. Okay, so the amazing thing is, uh, is that, okay, so... Uh, INSR inhibits apoptosis, so it stops cell death. Okay, so what's, once it inhibits cell death, then um, that gives your cancer cells a chance to grow uh, exponentially, more. to grow more. Wow. Now, what's amazing with PPAR uh, gamma activation is that it um, promotes apoptosis. Now, here's the thing: wow, TZDs do not do that. Okay, TZDs do not uh, induce cellular cellular apoptosis. Uh, apoptosis okay the product that stimulates cell death is microalgae peepars wow our simply nature peepars uh in fact i'm gonna ask juni right now to find that research and flash it in front of you okay so we actually published in uh, i think this is in hindawi uh which is uh the medical uh where people publish mm. medical journals mm -hmm. right yeah, and it states there our extract actually induces apoptosis. Yeah. So, you know, this is the funny thing. Uh, for all the cancer patients out there, again, just to remind you, apoptosis means that your cancer cells die by themselves. Yeah. All right, they are supposed to grow old and die in a way, but, but strangely enough, normal healthy cells grow old and die, but mm. cancer cells live much longer yeah. because of uh, this reduced apoptosis. Well, if you take Simply Nature PPROS, that's why we prescribe, why Doc Johnson, you prescribe it to your yep. patients. Uh, because it actually encourages the cancer cells to die, to die. on their own. Yeah. <laughs> Without using chemo or anything, is to mm. switch on the switch that makes them grow old and die. Wow, mm. that's amazing. Yeah, and the, the beautiful thing uh, with it is that... Um, Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you want to have a consultation with me, just comment down below and our team will get back to you to set an appointment with me. The Simply Nature peepers came from uh, microalgae, which is literally food. You know, it's uh, it was made by God, so God designed it that way. Wow. It's not synthetic what, whatsoever. So there's a lot of a myriad, thousands of uh, nutrients and the... Uh, and the polyphenols inside the the uh, the microalgae that works in synergy okay so when you take it then that's when it becomes uh, really effective especially when you tie it up to a healthy lifestyle okay <laughs> wow so 
we have definitively answered your questions today, right? So the original question, let's flash it up again, is does sugar promote uh, cancer growth? And the answer that Dr. Johnson gave is a very simple one. Simple and complex at the same time, but it's really simple. <laughs> Number one, yes, eating too much sugar is bad for you because it will cause your cancers to grow. But to avoid sugar completely is also unhealthy. That will all ketones, which, uh, which is the extreme where you don't take sugar at all, it actually increases tumor growth by 250%. So there you have it. Uh, to all the cancer patients, you can tell your loved ones that yes, you need sugar, all right? But there's a proper way to eat it, okay? So you can eat your white rice. Um, you can eat sweet stuff like sweet potatoes and yep. all that, okay? You can have the good things in life. But you need to make sure that the sugar doesn't spike in your system. So you got to have good dietary fiber, which is why Doc Johnson always recommends eating vegetables. Vegetables. If you really cannot find vegetables, because every restaurant around you only sells adobo, okay, <laughs> then take something like cleansing, okay, uh, dietary fiber. And what's so exciting is that today we found out how diabetes or insulin really uh, promotes cancer yeah. growth causes cancer to multiply quickly. So that explains why so many uh, cancer patients in the Philippines have a difficult time because mm. they are probably diabetic. Mm -hmm. They are probably diabetic. And it's such good news that Simply Nature Pea Powers actually controls diabetes. So it, it, it has all the wonderful effects. So there we have it, all right? You can have your sugar, you just gotta eat it right. And if you wanna know more, and if you want Doc Johnson to give you a clear indication of how you're doing, uh, how you should eat, then sign up for the consult. There's a link uh, in this video right now. You can, we have three lucky, again, we have chosen three lucky uh, viewers who will get a free consult. And for, rest, for the rest of the viewers, just click on the link so that you can arrange for a consult with Doc Johnson. And today we have a special, special promotion because Doc Johnson has given, you, you find out about a special promotion by clicking on the link and asking uh, Sheila and Lila, who will be there to help you arrange for your appointment. Again, if you have any questions, please ask. We, will tell, we might pick up your question and do an entire program on it. So Doc, thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye everyone. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Jansen and Sir Sean, for that very informative discussion. I'm sure that a lot of our viewers have learned so much from our discussion. Now, to answer your questions in this modern world filled with noise of different health opinions, trust the ones from the experts. But just for the benefit of those who just came in, I'd like to reintroduce our experts who will answer our questions for tonight. Starting off with the graduate of St. Luke's Medical Center, College of Medicine in 2016 and 2019, he was conferred as a diplomate of the International Board of Lifestyle Medicine and Philippine College of Lifestyle Medicine. He is also the president of Simply Heal Medical Group and a consultant at Alta Integrative Medicine and Wellness Complex at Perpetual Health Medical Center Las Piñas, where he manages patients with cancer and metabolic illnesses. Of course, our dear Dr. Jansen Kalalan. And our other expert, he is a successful entrepreneur. He is also a seasoned international speaker on a wide range of topics from personal success and healthcare. The CEO and founding director of Simply Nature International, Mr. Sean Lim. Good evening, Sir Sean and Doc Jansen. Uh, good evening, Sheila. Uh, good evening, Doc. I saw you got a fresh haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's getting hot. Yeah. Hello to all of you. Hi. Yeah, Doc, you know, when I was looking at our discussion video, this was a video that was done like a year, almost two years ago. Uh, number one, you right, look really right, right. young two years ago. Uh, <laughs> And uh, it's wonderful. I think our audience would agree. It's still a very relevant and interesting topic. I see questions about uh, that I remember was asked two years ago, uh, stevia and monk food, uh, monk fruit, uh, whether they're good sugars or not. So uh, again, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we look forward to answering your questions. So Sheila, let's, let's start. 
All right. So the first question is coming from Miss Gloria Armado. Good evening. What can you say about chi chiropathy? Okay, chiropathy. I think uh, she means chiropractic. <laughs> it's a uh, ah. yeah, chiropractors. No, so they manipulate yeah. the spine to adjust certain musculoskeletal disorders or illnesses or ailments. Okay. Well, um, if done correctly, chiropractors can actually relieve a lot of pains that yeah. uh, patients yeah. have. Though it is actually very dangerous. Okay, so only <laughs> go to a very reputable chiropractor, um, someone who is really who really knows what he or she is doing. Okay, that's my my tip. Make sure that the person has a certificate for from a uh, from a university or yeah, make sure the the one that's doing it has the proper um background, okay? Because it can be dangerous. There are actually a lot of horror stories that I have heard when I was still a student in Saint Luke's. Um, a lot of our a lot of our mentors were who are orthopedic actually tend to discourage their patients to go for this you know, because of the spinal manipulation. But uh, yeah, I've had my fair share of uh, horror stories, so <laughs> there's that. But I've seen also a lot of good uh, benefits, a lot of good results that um, a lot of chiropractors uh, do for their patients. So, so uh, my position here now would be in the middle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, just make sure you do your due diligence. <laughs> no, I totally agree with you. Uh, personally, my friend actually... Uh, I mean, there are different types, you know, the Western side type is, uh, what's that called? Uh, chiropractors. Uh, I think the Asian approach is uh, bone alignment. Uh, that's another uh, that's another uh, word that they use. And um, yeah, my friend just finished a bone alignment course and he's a really good friend. So he said, let me do your neck. And no, it was very difficult. <laughs> I was very hesitant, all right? Uh, but he is a very close friend. So, you know, I think uh, friendship was on the line. So I put my neck on the line for the friendship. <laughs> uh, he did He did manipulate my... Uh, he didn't do much. Literally. Right? <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, literally. And uh, there was one cracking sound uh, when I turned to the right. And when he did the other side and he tried... Uh, when he pulled my neck up to make sure my, my general spine... Uh, there was no more popping sound. So yeah, she said I was pretty aligned. And he is correct because um, I tend to like to read in the CR. And <laughs> not a good habit. <laughs> Maybe too much detail for some of our viewers. So I, I, my, 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 the shelf that I put my iPad on is on the. So I, I do always turn there. Mm -hmm. And I happen to like to read when I sleep, and I always sleep on my right side. So that's true. So uh, to answer that is true. If you find a good chiropractor or a bone uh, alignment, it, it will do wonders for pain. It will really do wonders for pain. And the popping sound that you hear is not your neck snapping, okay? <laughs> I used to think that my neck is going to snap. Uh, it's actually uh, air pockets being uh, released, all right? It's like when you snap your fingers, all right? It's like when you snap your fingers. So generally... um. Generally, your spine is really very strong. Uh, so unless the person use excessive force, it should be okay. Uh, but then again, like what Dr. Johnson said, if anything goes wrong with your spine, um, that's going to be a huge pain. So I would suggest uh, that you, you go to one that is very reputable. Uh, this is really where referrals are. I, I would, I would want to ask around. And make sure the person is, is really good. Uh, if not, then just go for the most very basic. Yeah. So if the person's trying like weird techniques on you or really putting a lot of effort, then uh, then you, you always have the right as a patient right there and there to say, no, you know, uh, we can stop here. <laughs> okay. So unless your pain is very, really unmanageable. Um, yeah. But like Dr. Johnson says. I've also had wonderful, heard wonderful uh, testimonies and horror stories at the same time. But on the same token, you've also heard of, no, I mean, we've also heard of surgeons who operated and took out the wrong organ. Um, <laughs> yes, so we also hear horror stories in uh, conventional 
medicine. So I, I think all this is due diligence. All right. So I'm pretty neutral about it as well. Yeah. You okay. Thank so you, you got our opinion. But if yeah, you're really, really said... suffering, right? If you're really, really suffering, I guess it's, it's worth exploring. Uh, maybe you tell the chiropractor you just want something very basic done. It's your first time. You're very concerned. Uh, and then he'll do only the very basic basic alignment for you and that should be relatively safe thank you sir sean we're starting off really really good all right to the first question <laughs> now on to our second question this was thrown to us privately by one of our registrants named mar question is in one of your simply nature videos it was said that end-stage kidney failure is irreversible which is the total opposite of what i've heard from one of your people or partner doctors i know that god has the final say but which one is true can you please clarify no let me take this one <laughs> since it's involved other doctors um okay technically speaking when you study uh pathophysiology when you study anatomy um if your end-stage kidney uh, disease, which also means your kidney is permanently, uh, is, is very seriously damaged, all right? Your nephron cells are actually destroyed. So one reason why late stage and stage kidney uh, diseases are considered irreversible is because uh, nephron cells cannot be replaced. Your body, your, your body does not make new ones, all right? So, however, when we diagnose uh, end-stage kidney disease, uh, we don't literally cut up a person's kidney to see whether the nephron cells are damaged. We see by the, the actual, how shall we say, function of the kidney, right? To, to make a judgment call whether the kidney is damaged or not. So in, when in our video, and I think I'm the one who actually reiterated what Dr. Johnson was sharing, that we, we were making a point that if you reach end-stage kidney disease or kidney failure, it is irreversible. We were making a point to all our viewers, right, that kidney, once your kidney is permanently damaged, it doesn't regenerate, okay? So don't get there, right? Don't get there. However, on the other side, if you happen to be an end-stage kidney uh, failure patient, our, what we will say to you will, will be different from doctor to doctor. Some doctors are very matter of fact. Uh, the textbook says it cannot be reversed, so it cannot be reversed. Um, but many doctors, especially the older ones, they have seen, how shall we say, miracles or exceptional cases, right? And because of that, because of their personal experience with exceptional cases, um, they may want to encourage you by saying, you know, the chances are very, very slim. It's what we call a Hail Mary pass, right? It's like you throw the basketball uh, with your eyes closed at the basket. There is a chance that um, you, you may get the basket. So we've all, in, 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 in terms of treatment and health, we have always heard of, we've heard of cancer patients who are supposed to die. Three or four oncologists tell them that they only have two or three months to live. And then they outlive everybody's prediction. They live a year, they live five years, some go to full recovery, even though the original diagnosis is you only have three months left to live. So what does it mean? It means that there is always a chance, no matter how slim it is. And you know, Doc Johnson and I always end our program by telling you, no matter where you are, there is always something you can do. There is always hope, right? And even in the worst case, if you don't get a full recovery, you make improvements to your quality of life. So with regards to this question, you know, we don't know your actual uh, full diagnosis or why that doctor actually told you that there is a chance. I would like to just uh, clarify that, yes, uh, textbook-wise, once you are end-stage uh, kidney or renal failure, uh, the, the cells do not regenerate. Uh, that's the textbook answer. And that is true in most clinical cases. However, within every within every patient's case, there are always exceptional, there could be different uh, reasons why your kidney failed. And the diagnosis might have, the prognosis might be, there might be a slim chance. And if financially you are capable of going for that slim chance, if it's something that is within your means, why not? Why not? Right. The reason is 
because once you go on to kidney failure, you go on to dialysis, you know, uh, I remember, I still remember the episode where Dr. Johnson was speaking about it. It was quite shocking to me because I always assumed that if you're a dialysis patient, you just have a lower quality of life. I was so surprised when Dr. Johnson shared that the average lifespan of a person on dialysis was like five years plus. So to go for, to allow your kidneys to fail completely and not do anything, go on dialysis is also another is also a mortality issue. So um, I would say if that doctor of yours has uh, wanted to give you hope and was aiming for that slim chance, yeah. And with you doing natural protocols, why not? Why not give it a shot, right? Um, so I, I hope that makes it clear for everyone, right? When we said it, we were serious about it that end stage renal uh, diseases, kidney diseases are textbook wise irreversible because your your kidney cells are destroyed. And how do we know by the function? Uh, could could the diagnosis be um, uh, mitigated? Yeah. Dr. Johnson gave a few cases where it, it could be acute damage to the kidney, which could be a temporary one that causes the function to, to, to make it look. But generally, if you're end stage, it would be a chronic one. And uh, likelihood is that your kidney cells are permanently damaged. So, but like what we said, if you have if you have the resources and if you want to fight, then as doctors, as health providers, we will want to encourage you and let's go for that recovery chance, no matter how slim it might be. And you know, the beautiful thing is, it no matter how difficult it is, there has, oh, there has been cases where people recovered. So uh, that's one reason why uh, the textbook answer is not definite, it's not the definitive answer for your personal health. It's just it, when we talk about a disease uh, theoretically or academically, that would be the answer. All right. So. I hope that clarifies. So I don't think there was anything terribly wrong that your doctor did uh, when he said that, you know, why not try and treat the end stage uh, kidney uh, disease? It's difficult, but, you know, uh, there is a slim chance. Uh, if financially, this is something well within your ability to do so, then I will also encourage you, why not try? And the worst case scenario, if he's using PIPA protocols, is really going to help with, diabetes, blood cholesterol and everything and that and inflammation and that's going to help your kidney, the rest of your body deal with a, a kidney that is damaged. So there is no real, uh, how shall we say, uh, downside to proceeding with the protocol that was uh, uh, prescribed. Doc, how is that for an answer? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Right. You get 100% you know, mark. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, it's so difficult, right? Academically, we know, but uh, the longer, the older a doctor is, the more strange cases he has encountered throughout his practice, where some lost cause, suddenly the person got well. Uh, and then we start to realize, you know what, as long as the patient wants to, why not we try, right? At least we, we give an honest opinion. It's difficult, but, you know, let's go, right? Thank you, Sir Sean. That was a very honest and encouraging still <laughs> answer. Thank you. All right, so the next, uh, just before we go to the next question, I'd like to greet some of our viewers, of course, starting with our dear Miss Lily Neo from, Lily Lu Neo from Malaysia, and of course, Miss Noemi Alona Veras and Ms. Ro uh, Mr. Roberto Muñoz. He's watching um, on our YouTube because we are also simultaneously um, being um, played on YouTube as well. All right. So the next question is coming from Ms. Nelia Mojica de Iro. I am presently on ana anastrozol or anazole for my stage 0 DCIS breast cancer. Is it safe for me to take PPARS? Is there no drug interaction? Yeah, it's perfectly safe. Uh, I actually even combined this with my some of my patients. But since you are stage 0, um, uh, PPARS tablets would be enough. Just make sure that you're healthy. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that, that's it. You live. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so so encouraging. Yeah. Yes. All right. So next question coming from Miss Noemi Alona Veras. How about the monk fruit and stevia sugar? Is it good? Oh, for that's a good one. No. Very related to uh, our topic. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, it's not. It's not okay. Um, stevia is an artificial sweetener. Although, if you try to Google this, no, stevia is a plant actually. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it, they their leaves. Now, the ones that we can buy from the market are already processed from the leaves. That's the problem. Um, artificial sweeteners have been found to make our blood clot easier. Okay, so that's a big problem for cancer patients because cancer patients, in and of themselves, no, their blood is easily uh, clotable already, easily clotted already. So if you consume artificial sweeteners, that's gonna put uh more uh tendency to clot further. No, so you'll increase your risk for heart disease by doing that. Okay, uh, monk fruit is the, it's the same. They are sugar, so sugar is a no no. Simple sugars, whatever kind of simple sugars, it's a no-no for cancer patients because um that can feed the cancer cells. But uh, more more than that, it will make your insulin spike up. With the spike in insulin, that will further stimulate the growth of the cancer. Okay. So um, however, here's the thing, though. If you would really want to use some sugar just to add some sweetness, it's fine as long as you combine it with a very high fiber meal. Okay. So what I what do I mean by that? Say for example, you are making pasta. Some of us like sweet spaghetti. Filipinos mm -hmm. are love sweet spaghetti, you know. Yeah. So instead of adding the table sugar, uh, or yeah, you can use some some other sugar, coconut sugar or or whatever. No, just make sure that the meal itself is high in fiber. So how do you do that? You use you change the, the the noodles. You use whole wheat noodles instead mm -hmm. of uh, ground, ground pork. Probably you can use uh, lentils, um, tomato sauce, uh, of course. No, then um, probably instead of you, know, you consume that with bread, right? Pastas, but uh, instead of bread, probably you can choose whole wheat bread or a salad, perhaps. No, so that's how you you increase the fiber. Uh, the amount of fiber of the meal. So if you do that, then it's fine to add a little bit of these uh, simple sugars. Okay? What is wrong is if you use simple sugars, like uh, you add them to a drink. Say, for example, you are trying to create a lemonade. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then or in the lemonade, since lemon is really very sour, you add in honey, you add in sugar. So it's still liquid. It's, it doesn't have any fiber at all when you drink it. So that's what is that's uh, don't do that, okay? So that's very similar to juicing, okay? In that sense, because if you do so, if you do, if you consume the drink that way, no, you're going to absorb all the sugar all at once, and with that, your insulin will spike. Then my lecture will happen, okay? So there you have it. Thank you, doctor. You know, that's a good strategy. You know, doc. Um. I just wanted to also add that, you know, Doc also recommended uh, the best sugar, Doc, I remember you shared is uh, date sugar, sugar made from dates. Um, I also wanted to share everyone to with everyone, I have a sweet tooth, okay? I really like sweet stuff, but definitely not Filipino level sweetness, okay? I, <laughs> I just like sweet stuff by Singapore standards. Uh, Filipino uh, is a whole new level, okay? But, you know, my... My wife has been encouraging me uh, to cut down on sweets. So one way, uh, one compromise or one baby step I took is I love chocolates. So since milk chocolate is both has milk and very sweet, my first compromise is if I could have any, my wife said, why don't you eat dark chocolate? Then I won't nag at you if you eat dark chocolate, right? So, uh, so I think dark chocolate, like minimum 75% or 70%, usually 80% cacao. Um, so that's really dark chocolate. And you know, dark chocolate is usually a lot less sweet than milk chocolate. And I, and since choc chocolate is my main sweet, uh, after eating dark chocolates for a while, I sort of, my taste for sweetness sort of dropped because I it's the only chocolate I can eat, right? So I learned to enjoy it. <laughs> uh, even when I occasionally eat Kit Kat, I have to choose a dark chocolate Kit Kat. So uh, what happens is that your taste for sugar uh, your, your requirement for sweetness actually drops over time. So now if I eat oatmeal, if I put a bit of uh, date sugar or muscavo, I don't have to put as much as I used to. So for those with a sweet tooth, uh, instead of thinking that 
if I use stevia, it's safe. If I use monk fruit sugar, it's safe. Then you eat, a, you make it as sweet as, as normal, right? So because you think the stevia, stevia is safe, the monk fruit is safe. The truth is all sugars are, are not so good. So what you can do is uh, learn to, and, and after what, it'll feel just as sweet, but you're actually only using one third the sugar. So I, I just want to let everybody know that, you know, that's another way instead of looking for an alternate sugar, uh, uh, learn to taper your, your taste buds. Mm. Thank you. Right, Doc, that would be more effective, right, Doc? Because uh, it doesn't mean you find a safe sugar, you can eat a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, Although date sugar, actually, there's another one, black sap molasses. Although, oh, yes. um, why, why, why did I suggest that no, in the first place? Yeah. Because they are the sugars which has some degree of antioxidants left. The other ones are, they don't have any antioxidants left anymore. So that's why I suggested date sugar and black stuff molasses. But of course, even though they still have antioxidants, don't overdo it. Because if you still if you consume too much of those sugars um, frequently, they'll still increase your risk of developing diabetes. You'll, you'll increase your uh, triglycerides. Well, these things will still happen. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Sean. Thank you, Dr. Lansen. Okay, um, another question. This one is interesting. It's not quite related to our topic tonight, but the question is, what paper product is good for a 14-year-old with seizures or epilepsy with who has an abnormal EEG result? Sir Sean, I'd also like to make a follow-up, uh, add a question on this, because I've encountered this to one of our clients, and he's asking about the correlation of the metabolic activity towards having um, epilepsy or seizures or even autism. Okay, so. okay, I think this one is pretty technical. I would definitely love to hear Dr. Johnson, but I'll give my, I'll give my, I'll give my little bit and then uh, Dr. Johnson can fill in the gap. Okay, um, in the area of autism, and I think epilepsy is also sort of uh, commonplace mm -hmm. for kids who suffer from autism autism or at least the doctors that treat autism often also treat uh also specialize with in kids with epilepsy okay so I, i'm actually in discussions and uh, with uh expert uh, doctor ex who specializes in treating autistic children okay so and i've had at least two personal friends with autistic children now they actually use the most simple of our products which is uh um PPAR tablets uh it did not cure the epilepsy or the autism of his children, but it did make it improve, all right? So what do I mean by improve? Uh, for the autistic children, they were less aggressive, all right? They were less aggressive. Uh, I guess they had less bouts of uh, anger uh, um, and, and, you know, that, that uncontrolled behavior. And I think for epilepsy also might have uh, reduced the frequency or uh, the length or the severity of it. Uh, my guess, uh, and 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 I say guess because we don't have any published clinical results about that that I know of of our product, right? But maybe Dr. Johnson can shed some light in terms of the research. It's, my my guess is that it might have to do with uh, neural inflammation, um, because mm -hmm. inflammation is a root cause for many brain uh, disorders or brain uh, brain 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 yeah brain disorders. So it can, from Alzheimer's to uh, schizophrenia to depression no neural inflammation does play a part it's one of the foundations so if our product helps with inflammation and it also helps with neural inflammation because it's inflammation in general uh, that helps improve the condition so is it a cure uh no but like treatment of cancer you want to do you want to do all angles right you also want to make the patient feel good you want to also lead uh, make it difficult for cancer to grow, even if you cannot totally destroy it. So same, uh, if, your, if your child is, has epilepsy or is autistic, uh, do go on the, into the, onto the Simply Nature PIPA tablets at least. So if you're doing any brain treatments in, th in terms of mental exercises and all that, and uh, adjustment to their diet, and, and for epileptic children, you know, Doc actually talked about it in his program just now, uh, keto diets are sometimes, um, how shall we say uh, are also administered as one of the protocols. So yes, it will help. Uh, will it cure? No, but it will help a lot. And it's something that I think your child should take uh, in order to help better manage 
this condition. Uh, Doc, maybe you can share your insights on this. Yeah, actually, to be honest, I have very limited experience with uh, PPARS and seizure disorders. No, um, although I have a patient who has seizure disorders, who I who her neurologist actually placed her on a ketogenic diet, and um, she came to me just to identify um, just to create just to create a meal plan for her. No, but uh, what I did was to identify um certain foods that uh, he that that she can eat and should avoid because uh, a ketogenic diet can have um detrimental effects. Then uh, what we did was just to bring the the nutrition prescription to a dietitian, so uh, the dietitian can would be the one to create the meal plan. So, but uh, that's just it. No, however, here's uh the thing. Um, simply nature peepers is made from microalgae. And microalgae are very rich in omega-3 fatty acids. What we know mm -hmm. in the medical literature is that omega-3 fatty acids help uh, brain health. Okay? Wow. So okay. that's that's just the basic uh that, that's that's just what we know right now. Mm -hmm. Um upon further investigation with my resources, apparently paper agonists can have uh, or can inhibit bit seizure attacks or lessen the frequency of seizures. Wow. Okay. However, the thing is, it's just theory. <laughs> <Okay? laughs> so, I will now answer your question. If you would want to try Simply Nature PPAR products, which product would be the best choice for uh, for this? No? My personal take on this would be PPAR's liquid because it has the highest concentration of PPAR agonists. Okay, how frequent should you take this? That's the next big question. Actually, hmm. no. Well, we can no, go for no, the, with the basic one vial once a day, I guess. No, <laughs> yeah. no set protocol because this is um, yeah, this is like uh, uh, I totally agree with you, Doc. You know, it's like new territory, right? We know. Wait, okay, here's the here's number one thing, right? It will only do good to your child. Right, yeah, it will help with the other uh, functions of his body. It will help with his metabolic uh, rate, uh, metabolism. And it will help his growth because it's it helps in cell delineation, proper growth of your child. Uh, it will help with his general health. Um, it will help with this. So actually, that whole range of benefits. But of course, as a parent, you're very clear what you want to go for, which is the <laughs> epilepsy thing. Um, yeah. So as Doc said. I would also concur with him that uh, maybe one box of liquid uh, once a day, right? Uh, and after 10 days, observe to see if there are any improvements, right? For example, if there was an epilepsy, epileptic uh, episode, was it more mild? Uh, or, or is it usually he would have an epileptic episode? But hey, uh, the epileptic episode was less within that, that period. So I don't know how frequent... Uh, your child has in terms of uh, seizures, right? So, but if he has seizures more than once a week, and then within that ten days he only had one, wow! Then, then we are on to something. Now, in terms of dosage and everything, it really is going to be a uh, uh, we're gonna walk this journey together. I would seriously ask you to go for a consult with Dr. Johnson, uh, because I think he he would be really good to be there and observe that and, and also walk with this. So on a, on a positive side, everything is good. Now, uh, Dr. Jansen recommended the liquid, and I totally agree with him also, because we want to see if this uh, can make a big difference to the, the seizures, right? Now, uh, after that, because the, the liquid is more expensive and epilepsy uh, seizures, I don't know how long uh, that, pro that, that process is going to take whether taking the liquid is only going to manage it or is it going to, uh, for a long, long term wise. So just to let you, uh, so that we actually have like also a budget plan, okay? Mm -hmm. If it does well, if the liquid does well, then I would say go down, go to the tablets, right? So maybe you kickstart. So maybe after that, there's improvement on the tablets, which is like very affordable. It's like price of your multivitamin, uh, vitamins, right? Um, and then see, if the seizures come again, then maybe apply just one vowel uh, for the, and see the next three days. So, so there's a, a lot of room for us to explore. But we, we, whatever it is, it's 
uh, that you, even the tablets is going to have benefits for your child. My niece and nephew basically grew up on it, especially my nephew. He's the one that never fails to take it. He's top in his class and top in everything in school. So uh, I'm not saying that uh, Pipa tablets makes your kids very smart, all right? But I think what it does is that it gives them the uh, attention. Uh, they are alert. They are nutritionally uh, good. So their health is good. So that allows them to focus focus more in their studies and pay attention in school and that will translate to better results right so uh there you go so dr johnson thank you for the insight it's really you know doc, another thing i i did actually read read and come across a, a medical re, a journal uh research done by a pharmaceutical company uh take if you take people agonists right like within two hours of a stroke it actually minimizes the damage of the stroke but this one is they actually say like within within an hour or so that like not, not like days after right but if you take it really close to your uh, stroke it actually prevents uh, the damage to your neural pathways yeah i don't know whether you chance upon that as well uh i actually have a different experience oh, um okay. this was with my patient who a lung cancer patient uh, uh -huh. I gave her mega dose uh, IV vitamin C. Then uh yeah. she had chest heaviness for two days. Okay. Uh the reason why she had the chest heaviness is because I told her to after taking the vitamin C drip, I told her not to take the PPAR uh liquid yet. Yeah. I actually gave her I told her three days, don't don't take it uh within seventy two hours from the mega dose vitamin C. To let the vitamin C uh, do but yeah. Yes, do its work. However, um, it came to a point that she cannot tolerate the chest heaviness anymore. So she took the liquid. Then uh, the chest yeah. heaviness immediately disappeared. Wow. So, wow. Because of the inflammation. Um, yes, yes, yes. It's because mega dose vitamin C is a prooxidant. It's a, it it, it yes. induces inflammation. And uh, yes. PPARS liquid, uh, well, scintillator PPARS is actually a very strong antioxidant. So yeah. it counteracted immediately. So in relation to the patient's uh, case note, uh, the the the, uh, the one who asked the question. Yeah. For epilepsies, uh, after the attack, usually there is a lot of inflammation also present inside the brain. Oh, okay. Yeah, because seizures are, you know, um, when the brain gives commands to our body, it fires electrical signals. Mm. Okay? Um, the electrical signals have a pattern. It is uh, with purpose. Okay? With seizures, it's it's firing um, relentlessly without pattern. So that's a seizure. That's why sometimes seizure uh, patients who who have a seizure, they're convulsing. They have this uh, body habitus. It's because of the brain uh, brain signals firing repeatedly. Okay. So after that, uh, typically the brain of the patient would the the, the glucose inside the patient's brain would go down. Sometimes even the oxygen levels goes down because of the heightened brain activity. And because of the heightened brain activity, inflammation would be definitely uh, present. And um, yeah, probably uh, the paper's liquid can also be used after the patient has a seizure. You can give the... the, the uh, once the patient is conscious, of course, you can give the paper's liquid just to manage the inflammation inside his brain. Yeah, so that's one use. Uh, that's one. Uh, that's one way on how I will use it. And then for the rest of the days that the patient does not have any seizure attacks, probably soft gels would mm -hmm. uh, would be enough just for maintenance. Um, those. So excellent. So doc, uh, from our from your discussion, you're using the pipa liquid to like minimize the damage that comes from seizure, right? So not not so much as to stop the seizure but make the consequences of the seizure uh less uh less less heavy i think that's that's also fantastic and wonderful for the parent right yeah wow yes. very good for the kid yeah thank you i i hope the viewer got a really good uh is, is full of hope after listening to all that that you have one more tool in your box to help your child yeah exactly exactly thank you sir Sean, thank you, Dr. Jansen. Now, um, let's try to answer a few more questions just before we say goodbye tonight. Okay, so the next question is, um, may I ask what, uh, what does PPAR food supplement really does for people or 
diagnosed with cancer? And is it really safe to buy from Lazada? Sir Sean, please oh. allow me to answer the second question. Okay, <laughs> okay I'll do a quick one. Uh, okay, so does it help with cancer? Yes, it does. Uh, there's so much uh, there's so much research on that and we have done so many programs and Dong Johnson uses it uh Okay, I'm going to give a wide spectrum. I don't go technical. I'll just show you different doctors how they use it. And then uh, so that, and then you can go and watch our videos on other ones. So the short answer is yes, it does. Okay. So for, for oncologists and people who use chemotherapy and surgery, they use our PIPA extracts to prevent the side effects of chemotherapy. All right. And for surgery, help the patients recover much faster. All right. Um, for those, for Dr. Johnson, he manages them throughout. So he knows when to use it for this and that. Um, and it's also the basis for uh, uh, strengthening your immune system to fight cancer, lower inflammation, which which allows cancer to thrive, right? Uh, if you're an molecular practitioner, all right? So these are the people who use lots of supplements. So I have one who deals with a lot of cancer patients. He uses it as a catalyst. So he already has a successful supplementation uh, regime, right, protocol. Uh, but he found that with the insertion of liquid extract, and he specifically likes liquid extract, um, he says the liquid extract makes everything work, right? And for cancer, needing at need, need for something to work at double speed is very important because cancer is about speed. The, the faster you shrink the tumor, the safer it is. The more aggressive you can, your, your protocol acts on the cancer, the longer the life, life expectancy of the patient is. You know? so, so that's important. Last but not least, talk, and you'll be happy to hear this. No, I just had a taping with Dr. Johan. All right. So uh, Dr. Johan actually in his taping shared something that even both of us have never shared before. Uh, he treats cancer totally naturally without even supplements. <laughs> okay, so this is literally, you know, there are many patients who ask us on our program, I, I want to treat myself uh, naturally. Actually, what they mean is, can I use network marketing products, that, uh, you know, direct marketing products or these natural products? Can I use ginseng, ling to all these? But Dr. Yohan actually shared, he treats them with normal food, just normal food. And uh, very interestingly, he has a uh, 60% uh, success rate, which is uh, pretty good. It's like almost the same as some chemotherapy, but you don't take any drugs. You, it's just your diet and your exercise. Uh, but he does use one supplement and our supplement is pretty much like a whole food. He uses uh, sometimes our liquid extract, actually mainly our liquid extract and definitely our tablet. And I asked him, what's the logic? I mean, what's the medicine point of view? Why did you use our product? He said he, he really uses it to fight inflammation. He really uses it to fight inflammation. So uh, so to our viewer who asked this question, uh, so all the answers are true, okay? So it means <laughs> that it, actually it, it does, it helps in all the ways. But I just highlighted to you that if you meet different doctors of different approaches, all of them found PIPA extract liquid to be effective for their cancer patient and it works in their protocols. So I think that's the, the best answer I, I I can give without being technical. Now, uh, Sheila, please go for your Lazada answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just want to say that I'm very pleased with this customer, with this viewer, because she's very cautious before purchasing. Um, we all have to be very cautious about what we purchase, most especially online. All right. But what I can say is here in Simply Nature, we are very vigilant on to other what we can say bad elements on on the online platform selling platform but we are very proud to say that we are not only in lazada but we are in lazmall so you can be assured that those you the orders that you place on our legit lazada and shopee links are very much um, authentic okay so always always ask um by just messaging us, always ask for the link so that you won't um you won't get scam or you won't get any mistake in terms of, of placing your orders. All yes. right. I, Especially since uh the can the cost for cancer treatment is not one thousand pesos, it's usually more than that. 
So uh, last mall and Shopee, I get the official links. We only have one, all right? That means it's only one last mall, one Shopee account. We don't have multiple. So uh, yeah, there's no other distributors that distribute on last mall or Shopee for our products. No, it's only company. And only the other way to get our products is through doctors like Dr. Johnson. Yes. Uh, Dr. Johan, Dr. Jimmy, all right? So, yeah. Yes. Tell me about Don't Dr. tell them through any other people, right? Because we always want to make sure our products come with great advice. So, amazing doctors like Dr. Johnson uh, and his peers, that we trust them to give proper uh, advice and consultation. Yes. Part of our service is to really understand your current status and your consideration, not only for your health, but also with your budget. So please do talk to us when if you have any concerns or questions. And having said this, I'd like everyone to, um, if you wish to have a consult with Dr. Jensen Kalalan, please just type in how to consult on the comment section or the link for you to schedule a consult with Dr. Jensen is also on the description box. Okay, Don't worry, Miss Beth will definitely get in touch with you immediately upon comment. Okay. Oh, All right. I just wanted uh, yes. to say, uh, Miss Summer extends her thanks to you. Oh. Uh, uh, she said thank you for the answer uh, for her daughter. She's she feels enlightened. You know, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to share. And I, I I'm I'm glad that the information was helpful. Thank you. Okay, so I guess this will be our last question. Try <laughs> okay. Coming from Miss Claire Ong, how come? Oh. Some patients who got cancer become diabetic. Some are not diabetic when they don't have cancer, but after being diagnosed and going through chemotherapy, they became they became diabetic. Well, we'll let that yeah, doctor, you know. Good, good, question. <laughs> good question. You know why? It's because of stress. Uh, of course, if you are diagnosed with cancer, immediately you have mental stress, uh, physical stress, uh, wallet stress, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So afterwards, you get treated, or sometimes you get admitted to the hospital. If you are admitted in the hospital, that's another stress. When you, uh, when they give you chemotherapy, of course, that's physical stress, no? Uh, the the medicine is both killing the cancer cells, the healthy cell. So your body will become stressed again. So your blood sugar goes up. Um, the link between this is cortisol. Cortisol is the hormone that um gives our body the feeling or the effects of stress. And one of them is elevation of your blood sugar level. Mm. So yeah, that's the link. That's the link. Okay. So um if actually I have a lot of patients who are cancer patients, then they develop they, they become pre-diabetic, no? Um mm. one tip I advise them is to take it easy. Make sure that they don't just focus their life around cancer or center their life around cancer, they have to have, they have to continue living. So that's one. And of course, another one is to make sure that they're eating right. So what Doc Yohan is actually doing with his patients. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I am, yeah, I actually do the same. Although yeah. I think Doc Yohan sometimes cooks for his patients. <laughs> uh, does, I don't. Does. It's a, it's a 10 day, for the patients that he treats, it's 10 days they stay with him. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes, yeah, if yes. you want a doctor that's, to for you, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so that's how he takes care of his patients. But uh, I don't, uh, because my yeah, I can, I just cannot do it physically anymore. So what I just give to the patients are tips, no, uh, a meal plan, some um, yeah, what to eat, what not to eat, um, these things, no. So yeah, um, that's how we manage um patients who develop diabetes, uh, in the course of their cancer journey and of course sometimes um food will not be enough so that's the time i use other modalities other supplements to to augment okay so one of them is simply nature pea parts because number one again it's very, it's a very strong antioxidant right and number two since it's a pea par agonist so it has very uh, it has a lot of pea par agonist and pea par agonist main uh mechanism of action is to act on the fatty acid metabolism and the glucose metabolism. So it will naturally lower down your blood sugar as well. If at that point, your blood sugar is still, uh, 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 it's still high, then that's the time I use other modalities like ozone therapy, mega dose vitamin C treatment, uh, uh, these things. Okay, So yeah, that's uh, how I approach uh, my patients.
No, you know, it's very interesting because um, I've been a good friend. You've been a good friend with, with me for over the last four years. And I've also seen like uh, the way you've treated cancer patients. You've nonstop, you know, over the years, you've continued to evolve. You, you include new protocols. Um, yeah. And, and then you move your specialization to include uh, protocols that are stronger. You know, uh, so I, I think it's a great combination because we actually, for all our viewers, we actually have a very good ecosystem of doctors. Uh, yes. <laughs> Dr. Johnson uh, has a good relationship with Dr. Johan, you know, and Dr. Johan continued to uh, specialize in really just food and a lifestyle and exercise, and he will stay with you for 10 days, or rather you stay with him for 10 days. Uh, Dr. Johnson went on to add to his uh, toolbox uh, other other very effective uh, protocols and then uh, supporting both of them is Dr. Jimmy <laughs> who does the surgery yeah even Dr. Yohan was telling me he sends his patients to Dr. Jimmy and he was describing he said oh Dr. Jimmy did a beautiful surgery the cut was beautiful and you know uh, and, and I, I, I like this uh, so when you guys are asking questions the answers are not just coming from one perspective it's really coming because uh, our doctors know each other, talk to each other. So it's not like normally, you know, you talk to a surgeon, he'll say, yeah, no, don't do that. So I, I think we have a really good community and that's why hopefully our answers are also uh, better and uh, better able to help you. Yeah. So, yeah. There we uh, go. <laughs> there's our, please, just one more. Just one more. Yes, yes. Very, very quickly, very quickly. Good evening. The question is uh, coming from Mr. D. Um, good evening. Does fasting affect cancer cells? If it does, how many oh, hours? That's a good one, Doc. That one how many awesome. hours should they do it? <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. Actually, fasting kills cancer cells because you're not wow. feeding your body. Cancer cells are very highly metabolic cells. So if you starve them, they die. There's actually one case report that I have encountered, mm. uh, stage 3 lymphoma. Uh, Lung Hodgkin's lymphoma. This patient did not want to undergo chemotherapy, much like other patients, no. So <laughs> although this patient was inside the hospital, um, what happened was the patient fasted for ninety six hours. So the patient was only on IV, uh, on IV fluids, okay, just to prevent dehydration. So ninety six hours, the patient did not eat for four days. Okay, wow. uh, lo and behold. Um, the lymphoma actually regressed. <laughs> wow! It, it regressed, right? So this is the proof that hey, fasting indeed has um effects on cancer cells. No, uh, oh. however, having yes, said so that, uh, <laughs> fasting for four days, this is something uh not everybody can do. And of course, since it's four days of not eating anything, you have to be monitored by a healthcare professional. Okay, for you to do so. So it's not something that can easily be done. Um, the next question would be, hey, can I do intermittent fasting instead? That question, I don't know if it will <laughs> negatively affect a cancer. Or if, yeah. yeah okay. Uh, however, with intermittent fasting, since you are trying to limit your food intake, okay, um, on some degree, on some days, uh, or, or sometimes the day, the cancer cells would definitely starve, no? It's just that I don't know how long should you be doing intermittent fasting. Is it for the rest of your life, or as long as your, uh, or, or as long as you have that cancer? Uh, more studies has to be done in this uh, aspect. Okay, but definitely, in, um, fasting does a lot of good, uh, for your body, as long as you don't have any other illnesses like diabetes or you are not taking any other medication that has an influence on your metabolism. Okay, so that's it. I, I, at this point, I think I wanted to, uh, I guess, encourage our viewers, who the, the viewer who asked about this fasting question. I think if you're going to do fasting for cancer, please, please have like Dr. Johnson or uh, Dr. Johan, you know, um, as your physician, right? And that, so that you could also text them questions occasionally, but don't don't like text them every five minutes, okay? <laughs> because uh, cancer is also a disease of starvation. That means uh, 
lack of nutrients is also uh, detrimental to a cancer patient, right? So imagine if you are third stage, uh, like Dominic, uh, Sheila's son, cannot, cannot fast <laughs> at that point. It was already uh, skin and bones. So it really means that it's something that, that you should do under the supervision of a, uh, a doctor. And I, I would recommend Dom Johnson simply because uh, one very practical thing, Dom Johnson uh, does a very good online consult. So that's great, right? You're just doing fasting. You don't want to drive three hours to the clinic, to his clinic, wait, wait two hours because there are so many people waiting for the doctor, right? Uh, just to ask a simple question, doc, I didn't eat for two days. Am I still okay? <laughs> right? So I think that's where teleconsult will be so effective. So, I mean, have an initial consult with uh, doc and then uh, once the relationship is started, you know, you can always ask him some uh, questions or his healthcare specialist can, who is also fully trained in this, this area uh, is able to support you. So don't fast without um, someone on call all right, <laughs> to, to check that everything is okay. Thank you. I, I couldn't agree more. I actually would just want to say very quickly that I've seen how Dr. Jansen does his consults. He's very meticulous. He digs deeper onto the medications that his patients are taking. And he asks a lot of questions, <laughs> I would say. But he, for this person who asked this question, you might want to consider having a consult with Dr. Jansen. And of course, for other people, for those of you who wish to have a consult with Dr. Jansen, once again, the link for you to schedule a consult with him is in the description box, or you can just type in how to consult on the comment section. Okay? All right, so just before we say goodbye to our viewers tonight, I'd like to ask for your very quick parting words for each one of you who would like to start off, Dr. Jansen, Sir Sean? I'll start yeah. off. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to start off by making a plunk. <laughs> uh, first of all, um, we are very excited for 2024 because uh, our first face-to-face -face meeting, October 14, was an incredible success. Uh, the success is because the patients and the attendants that came, uh, they actually came up to us. In, they immediately took advantage because both a surgeon and Dr. Johnson were both there, Dr. Jimmy and him were there. They were, they were swamped with patients, asking them questions. And uh, so many patients decided on a, um, on a direction and strategy for their cancer treatment. So we're going to have one early next year, I think first week of March. So very soon uh, when it, when it, if, you know, inquire about it, um, make reservations, uh, come, because this time around, we will probably include uh, a few new interesting ones uh, to be the panelists. Um, and also, like I said uh, to Dr. Johnson just now, I just met out with Dr. Johan. We did a taping. Uh, so look out for it. For all of you who have been asking, I want to treat cancer naturally. I don't think we can get any more natural. No supplements, <laughs> just food and uh, exercise. Yeah. And, and I, I asked him a very acid test question. Dr. Johan, what's your success rate? So he was saying, okay, I'm not going to give you like industry success rate or anything. Just based on the number of patients that came and how many got, got well, he said uh, 60 to 70%. So for out there, for all of you cancer patients or loved ones with cancer patients, look out for this program. And of course, after that, uh, Dr. Johnson and I, and maybe even Dr. Johan will be available to for you to ask questions, right? So look out for that. Uh, soon. Doc? I'm actually excited to see, <laughs> you know, someday Dr. Han joining us. Yeah, I actually miss fun. him. I, yeah, I actually miss him. I haven't talked to him for quite some time already. So, um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be fun. Now, uh, to all the cancer patients that, we're, that are watching us, uh, don't lose hope. There's always something that we can do, but in whatever situation you are in. So, let us help you uh, make that decision. Okay, so um, there you have it. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you so much once again, Sir Sean and Doc Jansen, for answering all our viewers' questions for tonight. And of course, we hope to see you next week again to answer the questions. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Now, at this point, um, I'd like to invite everybody. Um, but before that, before we invite everybody, I just want to say that um, where, whatever condition you have or whatever stage your, your condition, wherever your stage your condition is now, um, 
the purpose, one of the purpose of this webinar is for you to discern and understand what is the next best action to take. Okay. All right. Now at this point, um, please don't forget to like and follow us on your so on your social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can always be informed and updated with our online events. And also, please great news, everyone, because you can still avail of our power pack and kickstart packages for for uh, the toxic vacation and immune system booster through complete nutrition. The management has approved uh, buy 10, get one free. So don't wait for the Christmas rush to get the best gift of health. Okay, I'm sure that you're thinking about your parents or your loved ones when you have seeing this gift packages because it's perfect for them. Okay, once again, our products are available via Shopee and Lazada, and of course, directly from our BGC office, okay? All right, now, at this point, I'd like to invite everyone because this coming Thursday, yes, that's next Thursday, um, November 30, still at 7.30, the title of our webinar, upcoming webinar, is Lung Cancer Solution from a Surgical Oncologist Perspective. Yes, this is a very interesting and exciting um, um, webinar that is um, discussed as well by our surgical oncologist who is also at the same time a PPAR partner doctor. There you go. Guys, once again, we would like to say thank you for, for watching us and joining our webinar for tonight and really hope to see you once again in our next webinars to come because here in Simply Nature, we are always with you from start to healing. Thank you, everybody. Good night and God bless you all.